Welcome to the house of hypertrophy. When it comes to developing your goal physique or strength levels, can a key component accelerate your gains while minimizing training plateaus? Some of you may be thinking, wait a second, are you talking about special vitamins? Not quite, actually not at all. Rather, I'm talking about periodization. Huh? What on earth is this? In very simple terms, periodization refers to manipulating your training variables across time. Linear periodization and daily undulating periodization are the most studied. Linear periodization mainly involves decreasing the number of reps you perform across weeks while using heavier loads. If we consider intensity as the load you're using and volume as the product of sets multiplied by reps, we can say linear periodization involves decreasing volume and increasing intensity across time. Daily undulating periodization mainly involves varying the number of reps every session of the week. So if for example you're training the bench press three times a week, you may use these variables across those days. You could perform this every week and progressively overload to keep training to or close to failure within those rep ranges. Using the same definitions as before, undulating periodization involves volume and intensity going up and down across weeks. All of this contrasts with non-paradise training, which is just training with the same rep range and progressively overloading within that across time. So does periodization lead to more hypertrophy and strength versus non-paradise training? Let's dive in. Regular House of Hypertrophy viewers will know that on average, reps between 6 and 35 produce similar hypertrophy provided reps are performed to or close to failure. Given this information, you may think varying rep ranges shouldn't provide extra gains. Well, we can't rule out there potentially being a synergistic effect of training with different rep ranges. But let's take a look at what the evidence says. A 2022 meta-analysis from Denmark helps us out. For those unaware, a meta-analysis statistically combines the results of numerous studies looking at the same topic and is generally considered the best form of scientific evidence. The researchers found no significant difference in muscle growth between non-periodized and periodized training. This held true for both trained and untrained subjects. The researchers additionally performed a comparison between linear periodization to undulating periodization. We already detailed what linear periodization may look like, as well as daily undulating periodization. But weekly undulating periodization is another form of undulating periodization, which involves cycling through different rep ranges across the weeks. The researchers established muscle growth did not significantly differ between linear and undulating models. This held true for both trained and untrained subjects. So at face value, these findings tell us that periodization may not matter for building muscle. And if you do decide to periodize training, there may be no real difference between linear and undulating models. So is that all we need to know? Not quite. Meta-analyses are only as good as the studies contributing to them, and there are two potentially important limitations with the studies. Furthermore, there are some other studies that are worth knowing about. Before unraveling these points, let us first analyze the effects of periodization on strength gains. The 2022 meta-analysis from Denmark also evaluated the effects of periodization on one rep max strength gains. It was found periodization did lead to greater strength gains than non periodized training, holding true for both untrained and trained subjects. However, there is a potential limitation. We know that training with lower reps and heavier loads better increases one rep max strength. For example, this study had subjects train a program including the bench press and squat with either 3 sets of 2-4 to four reps with a heavy load or 3 sets of 8-12 to 12 reps with a moderate load. Bench press and squat strength gains were superior with the 2-4 to four reps. I bring this up because in the studies behind the meta-analysis, the periodized training tended to involve more training with lower reps and heavier loads. For example, here's how one of the studies looked. A non-periodized group only trained with sets of 8 to 10 reps, while a periodized group involved some training with 4 to 5 reps. Therefore, periodization itself may not have caused the greater strength gains. Rather, it might be because the periodization groups involve training more with lower reps and heavier loads. We need better designed studies to investigate this further. For instance, how would this periodization program compare to a non-periodized group that just trained with lower reps and heavier loads? Yet, 
Other areas of the literature may still suggest periodization has strength benefits. Returning to the 2022 Denmark meta-analysis, the researchers performed an additional comparison between linear and undulating periodization for 1 rep max strength gains, and these gains were greater with undulating periodization. Interestingly, this only held true for trained subjects and not untrained individuals. Therefore, undulating periodization may be better for increasing 1 rep max strength versus linear periodization in trained individuals. And since most studies involved both periodization models training with lower reps and heavier loads the same number of times across the study, this wouldn't explain the findings. Moreover, there's other evidence periodization could benefit strength. Moments ago we mentioned how training with lower reps and heavier loads best increases strength. This is likely because they more closely replicate a 1 rep max strength test and more effectively develops your skill and neural adaptations towards this. But I'm skeptical that training only with lower reps and heavier loads in the long term maximizes strength. The reason for this is lower reps with heavier loads aren't the most effective for building muscle. For example, we know this study found that 3 sets of 2-4 reps are better increased strength than 3 sets of 8-12 reps, but muscle growth was overall better with the 8-12 reps. In the very long term, muscle growth might contribute to your strength levels. This is because a large part of muscle growth is the addition of force generating units that should enhance your muscle strength. We'll have some videos on this in the future at the House of Hypertrophy. There Therefore, having a combination of lower reps to develop neural and skill components and higher reps to more efficiently build muscle may be ideal for improving strength in the long term. So overall, my current conclusion is that periodization, particularly some form of undulating periodization, is beneficial for improving your 1 rep max strength. Returning to discussing muscle hypertrophy, we mentioned although the meta-analysis found no significant difference in hypertrophy between periodization and non-periodization training, there are some limitations. It could be argued the periodization training in the studies was suboptimal for building muscle. What I mean is in a fair few studies, we know the periodization group spent some time training with 4 or fewer reps, which we also know isn't the most effective for building muscle. Rather, reps between 6 to 35 provided they perform too or very close to failure, are better for building muscle. Therefore, it would be interesting to see the results of studies that do not have the periodization groups go as low as 4 or fewer reps on their sets. Another limitation of the studies is they largely lasted 12 weeks or less. What about in the longer term? We have this study by Kramer which was involved in the meta-analysis. This study was actually 9 months and it's the longest study to date that's been conducted on the topic. It compared a non-periodized group to a daily undulating group that varied their rep range between 4 and 15. Increases in fat-free mass were greater for the daily undulating group, but fat-free mass is an indirect measure of muscle growth. The subjects were also previously untrained women, so you may question its generalizability, but this isn't always a problem as detailed in a previous video. Even so, we might just consider this early evidence of the long-term effects. Furthermore, some other studies point towards varying your rep ranges benefiting muscle growth, such as this paper. Subjects performed a range of exercises for 3 sets each in a training session. A narrow rep range group performed 12 reps on the first set, 10 reps on the second set, and 8 reps on the final set. A wider rep range group performed 15 reps on the first set, 10 reps on the second set, and 5 reps on the third set. In other words, both groups did what is known as ascending pyramid training, the only difference being the wider rep range group trained across a wider range of repetitions. After 12 weeks of training, muscle mass gains were superior for the wider rep range group. The subjects were previously untrained older women. Finally, let me describe what may be the strongest reason for varying rep ranges. As alluded to earlier, reps between 6 and 35 appear to be similarly effective for building muscle. However, this is based on the average results of the studies, and we have some data indicating individuals may differ from this. This is a concept explored very recently at the House of Hypertrophy, with this paper establishing some people experienced better thigh growth from either training with 8-12 reps or 27-31 reps. Since then, I have also discovered another paper detailing individual differences. Seated and standing calf raises were trained for 4 sets each session by previously untrained men. They performed 6-10 to 10 reps to failure per set with one leg and 20-30 to 30 reps to failure per set with the other leg. Average growth of 
the calf muscles was similar between both rep ranges, but although some aligned with the average, others saw better growth with a 6 to 10 or 20 to 30 reps. In reality, it can be difficult to figure out if you grow better with a certain rep range, and it could even differ between your muscles. Accordingly, the simplest solution might be to vary your rep ranges. That way, if some of your muscles respond better to higher or lower reps, varying rep ranges ensures at least part of your program is optimized. For this reason, and some of the other reasons covered, it may be a good idea to train with different rep ranges. Remember, no study to date has found it to be inferior, but I will say if you're coming from the position where you don't want to vary your rep ranges, I'd say simply continue training as you prefer. The evidence outlined in this video is not strong enough to say you're absolutely going to be missing out on a ton of gains when not varying rep ranges. If you do want to vary your rep ranges, you have a ton of flexibility on how you may do this, a linear, undulating, pyramid approach, or even something else like training different exercises for the same muscle with varying rep ranges. Remember for strength gains, undulating seems to be better, so could be ideal to develop strength and size simultaneously. If you're searching for further guidance about training, our high-quality partner, the Alpha Progression app, can help you create, track, and evolve your hypertrophy or strength training. It has multiple valuable features for all training levels. Their incredibly flexible generator can custom make an evidence-based training program 100% to your needs in less than three minutes. Let it know your experience, what equipment you have, and how often and how long you want to train for. There are over a quadrillion input combinations on which your plan is based, and the plans tend to involve varying rep ranges slightly for different exercises that train the same muscle. But Edits can be made to vary even further or reduce variation depending on your choice. Graphics unveil your long-term progression, thereby saving you time from having to manually track it. There's also a massive exercise database. Scrolling through, you may discover variations you never knew existed. The link in the comments and description allows you to try all the features of the app free for two weeks. And if you like it and decide to go beyond, you'll get 20% off a subscription. The app's reviews speak to its high quality. Before summarizing the video, we need to clarify some things. Some viewers might have been wondering, isn't varying rep ranges ideal because lower reps better grow fast twitch fibers while higher reps better grow slow twitch fibers? Despite being logical, we've previously seen at the House of Hypertrophy that the research doesn't support this. We've also just talked about linear and undulating periodization as we know they're the most studied, but theoretically there are a trillion other ways you could periodize for strength or size, and in the pinned comment I've speculated on other methods. Finally, we've heavily used the term periodization throughout this video since it was used in the literature, but I don't think this was necessarily appropriate in all cases. The pinned comment also contains my expanded thoughts on this. Nonetheless, summarizing the video, periodized programs seem to just produce similar muscle growth to non-periodized programs. Similar hypertrophy between linear and undulating periodization models is also found. However, there are some limitations to these studies as well as extra research that might suggest training with different rep ranges could be beneficial for hypertrophy, so you might wish to do this in some form. But if this doesn't appeal to you, know it's still possible to grow very well without training with different rep ranges. As for strength, periodization programs seem to result in greater improvements than non-periodized programs, and in trained individuals, undulating periodization seems to produce better gains than linear periodization. Thank you for watching. Feel free to check out the Alpha Progression app or our recent deep dive into building the lats.